Welcome to Coin Retrospectives, short histories of old coins. And this is a Susan B. Anthony dollar, minted from 1979 until... Wait a moment, where's all my megapixels? Hang on, they're around here somewhere. Ah, here they are. And this is a Susan B. Anthony dollar, minted from 1979 to 1981, and again in 1999 as a stopgap measure. Designed by Frank Gasparro, chief engraver of the United States Mint, its obverse features Susan B. Anthony, a social reformer who worked tirelessly in the late 1800s to help win women the vote. She's the first woman to feature on a circulating United States coin, with the first ever woman appearing on a United States coin being the Spanish Queen Isabella on the 1893 Isabella Quarter. On the reverse, it's the Apollo 11 insignia reused from the Eisenhower large-sized dollar coin. This seemingly odd pairing of Anthony and Apollo 11 drew some criticism as the two aren't exactly related. It made sense on the Eisenhower dollar, as it was his administration that established the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, but to reuse it for the Anthony dollar didn't make much sense at all. Gasparro's original design included a portrait of Lady Liberty and a soaring eagle. Nevertheless, the Anthony design was approved in 1978 with the aim of making the dollar coin smaller, easier to carry, and less expensive to mint. The Mint had also conducted experiments with octagonal and tridecagonal coins, but ultimately these plans were scrapped, and instead the rim of the coin would feature an 11-sided border to aid identification. The coin began to circulate in 1979 with a government stockpile of 500 million due to fears that the coin would be hoarded. But they needn't have worried. As with the Sacagawea dollar that would come 21 years later, the coin was an absolute flop. Being so close in size and color to the quarter was its major downfall. Despite a half million dollar marketing campaign to educate bank employees and the public about the new coin, the confusion served to hold up transactions across the country. Shopkeepers began to refuse the coin in trade. It even spawned legislation to increase its size, although it never ended up passing. California Representative Jerry Lewis, no not that one, remarked that the Anthony dollar had become known as the Carter Quarter due to its size, proximity to the actual quarter, and association with the president that authorized its minting, Jimmy Carter. Thus, the Anthony dollar, spurned by the general public, ended minting in 1981 after just three years. The stockpile sat in government vaults until the end of time. Just kidding, that would have made for a really boring end to this tale. The Anthony dollar began to be used in businesses such as subway transit systems, most notably the Baltimore Metro Subway Link in 1984, which used the Anthony dollar as its token, vending machine operations, which undertook $100 million services to retrofit machines to accept the new coins, and in the early 1990s, stamp vending machines in United States Postal Service offices. All of these helped to bring the Anthony dollar back from the brink. It may have taken 16 years, but eventually, as the aforementioned stockpile began to shrink, Congress passed the 50-State Commemorative Coin Program Act, which spawned not only the state quarters that began releasing in 1999, but also the $1 Coin Act of 1997, which authorized minting of a new dollar coin. This would eventually become the Sacagawea dollar, but as that stopgap measure I mentioned earlier, the Anthony dollar was again minted in 1999, while the Sacagawea dollar was in the design stages to enter circulation in 2000. Of course, no one liked that one either, and the Sacagawea dollar had its problems as well. I figured I'd take a moment to address why the Anthony dollar seemed to be doing so well towards the end of the 1990s, and then no one liked the Sacagawea dollar. If you're confused, there's a link to the Sacagawea dollar video I did in the description, or you can click the card in the upper right corner. So in the Sacagawea dollar video, I had mentioned that that dollar coin flopped hard. 
This might seem contradictory to what I've recently said about the Anthony dollar seeing success and usage in the late 1990s. Part of the reason is that Americans don't seem to like using dollar coins in general, and especially in commerce that isn't automated like vending machines or self-checkout. Most cash registers don't have a space for a great deal of dollar coins, and dollar notes are a lot more convenient to carry around. The other half of the reason is the fact that electronic banking became common in the late 1990s and digital or wireless payments soon afterwards. With this move towards a cashless society, it's no wonder that dollar coins have largely disappeared from commerce. The Susan B. Anthony dollar is 75% copper and 25% nickel, with mint marks appearing to the left of Anthony here. It might not be surprising that the numismatic value of the Anthony dollar is almost non-existent with the exception of proofs and a few varieties. The only variety I'm going to mention here is the 1979P wide rim variety, where the date nearly clashes with the rim, but even this carries only a small premium, except in higher grades. And that wraps it up for the Susan B. Anthony dollar, the first small size dollar coin in United States history. If you enjoyed this video, and especially my new camera, thanks again to Nami for allowing me to purchase it, please consider subscribing. And as always, be sure to leave your two cents in the comments and have a great day. This being my 25th actual video, minus the April Fool's video I did, I'd like to take a moment to thank some folks that helped make this happen. Thanks to Nami, Sky, Raffalo, Corvi, Trevor B, Nick C, Scott A, Corey K, Everyone Independence Coin, and of course, you for watching. All of your support and feedback helps make my videos that much better, and for that, I'm terribly indebted to you. I owe all of you a drink. Cheers.